Thanks for staying with us. Uh, we're now uh, being joined by Comre by Mr. Amechi Asuguni, former Deputy President, and uh, oh, a comrade is in order. Amechi Asuguni, former Deputy President, NLC, and Labour and uh, Industrial Relations expert. Good morning and welcome, comrade, to the program. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Okay. We're talking this morning about the fact that uh, uh, Governor Baseki has announced 70%, oh, 70,000 Naira new minimum wage. Let's first of all begin with your thoughts on that. Uh, yes, I think uh, the announcement made by the governor of Edo State a uh, few days ago, uh, we consider it as a, a sharp uh, positive move. Uh, we believe uh, that should be the mindset of governance towards motivating workers to enhance productivity. So for us as uh, labor and even pro-Nigerians who actually have this uh, belief that the uh, government owes the people responsibility to generate revenue for governance. And I think when people talk of inability always, they should also talk of those that have the ability and capacity to remain stable. So that move was very positive and progressive in favor of Nigerians, not just workers. Because the economy is about the people. Is that not just like um, uh, bleeding you and giving you milk at the same time, you know? You will still lose blood more than the generating it. Uh, so... The workers are asking, you know, nationally, the workers are asking for about 300 or 600,000 uh, Naira because of the economic realities. And, and, and I agree. Uh, but now he has come to give 70,000. Will that shut the NLC up or will, will that affect it positively, the agitations by NLC uh, to move the minimum wage to something really, really high? Uh, the move by governor has advantage than the otherwise because he has just told you that 30,000 is overdue for increment. And moving above 100% suggests progressiveness because even the federal government a few days ago also approved increment for civil servants and uh, that increment about 25 and 35% respectively. That suggests also that they are willing to go beyond the percentage they have so offered. So if a dose state has offered 70,000, which is uh, by standard reasonably above what we're earning, it means that he is also willing to comply to the outcome of the negotiation. Should the minimum wage become 300,000, for example, a dose will be balancing his own offer with 230,000. So the move is that we are tired of waiting for this uh, negotiation. That suggests that uh, it's one of those states that will be willing to comply to minimum wage when concluded. Very interesting. But uh, it will interest you to know that the minimum wage that the federal government has, has moved up by 20% to 35% will amount to 40 to 47,000 Naira uh, minimum wage. So, which means this is way higher than what the federal government is talking about right now. But the thing is, some people are expressing some doubts about the sincerity and sustainability of what a do governor has done. Uh, this is because, one, uh, the Edo state is approaching an election. So, they're calling it an election or a campaign strategy. Secondly, my own reservations are that you increase salary when you are at the 11th hour of your administration. Uh, what are you leaving for the next governor? Is that a good thing to do, that a governor is leaving and then he's bringing a new salary structure that the next governor may find difficult to sustain? But you should also look at it from the other way. I know Nigerians can react in multiple forms, but what should interest us is the step taken. Because governance, like we said, is a continuum. Not minding the time pronouncements are made, the question is, are they solving the economic problem? Because whether he's doing it on the eve of his uh, exit 
or is doing it as the at the peak of his administration. It all boils down to priority of the state at a point. And that also tells you maybe that you would have done that with the consent of the incoming governor. Looking at their own, uh, maybe their own political party would have uh, yeah, but the, designed the governor, we that increment. In that governor, order. we don't know where he's coming from. Whether it is going to be the party of the Edo State Governor, the incumbent governor, or not, we don't know that. Uh, we don't know how much um, uh, contribution the 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 State Assembly had to this matter, or whether he just made a pronouncement and all that. We've also seen cases where governors, at the end of their tenures, uh, give employment to a lot of people. That is supposedly a good thing because it will change the economic fortunes of the people that they are given, giving this employment. But the next governor comes, even though it's a continuum, as you said, they reverse all that and sack these people. So, so that's my fear. So if you're doing this now, how, much, how strong in law is this policy that you have brought, the new minimum wage that you have brought, and how sustainable will it be vis-a-vis uh, -vis the um, finances of a do state? I think uh, in law, wage award is legitimate, and it does not give uh, a parameter of how much to be awarded. No governor would give wage award or announce wage increment when you are suffering from uh, possibly owing debt, especially worker salary. But any state that has the capacity to have been paying salary up to date and consider minimum wage as overdue for renew and went ahead to announce more than double of such wage, especially when even what he announced, because we are trying to actually give some correlation of value the announcement in order to encourage other governors. If not, the question I would have asked Anybody that question 70,000 as uh, significant is what can 70,000 buy for a worker? Mm. Today, today, 70,000 can they buy a bag of rice? Time minimum wage was put in place for 30,000. We know the price of rice at that time. So now that he has awarded 70,000, has he solved the problem of salary? The answer is no. So even what he has done so far has not cured the expectation of labor. Mm. Because when we talk about TUC, MSC, and negotiating with federal government. It, that is a very minute level of it because wage is about the economy of the country. Wage is about both the public and private sector. Without which no other economy, no other variables can drive. The women that trade on the street, they depend on this salary earners to patronize them. And that is what you see everywhere, even when you talk about wage increment. Wage increment without improving our economy will also be like uh, betting the back of a lizard. Because whether we like it or not, wage is expected to cure the demand and the expectation of family in terms of a living standard. But whereby we are not producing anything in this country as the case is now, it, do it doesn't matter how they increase that wage, it will still amount to loss. Mm. Whether, you, 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 you agree with me that if a country that depends so much on importation, depend on a uh, foreign uh, currency. In exchange, what is 70,000 to dollar? That tells you that you can't buy anything from outside the country which your family will, will be needing at most. So those are the challenges that we are just commending the governor because he's the first to have taken this step. So the time is immaterial because whether it's living, whether it's staying, a do state has taken that position, not about seeking. Okay, well, uh, I just uh, the on, on the on the Guardian newspaper today there was a um, a summary of what we have been going through, and I just like to say, 2019, the Nigeria's minimum wage uh, per dollar was uh, 88 dollars, um, and then in 2023 it kept dropping until in 2023 it became 23 dollars uh, for the minimum wage. Right now, with the dollar, the rate of the dollar now, I don't know if it is still in dollar or it has gone to uh, cents or something, or maybe it is like ten dollars, uh, the minimum wage that we're talking about. I'm I'm glad that you said um, it's insignificant when he's doing this and all that, but the question is, can it even solve the problems now? 
Today is Workers' Day. Happy Workers' Day, by the way, to you. <laughs> Happy Workers' yes. Day to Nigeria. Yeah. So, but, but today, what are we expecting from Labour? Will their agitation continue, or will they just be pointing fingers at a do and saying every other person should copy a do? What are we expecting from uh, the table of the NLC, for instance? In fact, the action of a do state governor uh, is going to motivate the negotiation itself. Because if this step has been taken off the table, it also means that people cannot even the people can no longer wait for the outcome of the negotiation. And that is a that speaks volume when it comes to negotiation. I have participated in minimum wage review and I know that when we hear reactions positively from government in this order, the last negotiation that was done in twenty seventeen or so, that negotiation uh, twenty nineteen, uh, if I'm not mistaken. That, that negotiation was signed into law. But before the agreement was reached, governors were the challenge we had then. They were more or less the one campaigning the adverse of ability to pay. So now that one of them has taken this step, is going to actually have a multiplier effect positively on the side of the negotiation where you still find those governments and labor. So rather than being discouraged or pointing to 17,000, it should be a yardstick to if improving from what has been offered. Because minimum wage negotiation is not discretionary. You can't say, I need 600,000 because you just need 600. You must justify them. Federal government must also justify its offer. You can't say you are offering 20% or 40% in this neighbor. You, can, you cannot even justify your offer. Therefore, whatever each party will be putting on the table has to be accompanied with the economic values, what can it do for the people? And the side-by-side -side minimum wage, what is the Nigerian government also doing to improve the economy in such that the wage in question will be a living wage? Because if at the end of the day, I can't use the money to purchase what I need in my family, then it's dead on arrival. So I, we are encouraging the negotiating team to take this as an advantage and uh, use every means possible to enhance uh, and also ensuring that this minimum wage is concluded now so that uh, 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 the, the purpose in which the committee was put in place will actually be enjoyed by the people. It's almost over-delayed as far as I'm concerned because if you, if, you see the, if you saw the speed in which the president put this committee in place, you would believe that two months they would have been concluding on a very reasonable minimum wage. So Nigerians are patiently waiting. Okay, um, but every Nigerian seemed to be supporting um, labor in this and saying that uh, a minimum wage needs to be reviewed, even though the, the quarrel is that labor seems to be talking only about themselves because uh, even if they pay labor a, a million naira, inflation is going to take it from them immediately. And everybody who is buying in the market may not have the opportunity that labor uh, union uh, is having because not everybody is working for the government and all that. Now, my r real question and worry is that even now at 30,000 uh, 30, naira minimum wage, some governors are still complaining that they are not able to pay and they're actually not paying uh, this uh, amount of money. Now, in your experience and in your interaction with the governors, with the, with the government, do you think this is just an excuse they're giving and all the governors are capable of paying something a lot higher than 30,000 Naira? Uh, uh, the, the, my take on that uh, is uh, governors who tell you today of their inability to pay 30,000, those are the same governors who mistakenly find themselves in place of power. You know, governance is not about representation. Governance is about action. It's about production. It's about being productive. It's prudency to the core. So when governors tell you that they cannot afford 30,000 as it is today, it tells you the injury with their mental capacity. It tells you the disadvantage in the choice of those people to govern a state. No state in Nigeria lack capacity to even pay 100,000 as wage. <coughs> the only thing is how do we prioritize our expenditure? in such a way that workers come first, knowing fully well that those are Nigerians that will make the governance work. So the way they see workers, they see workers as a third party, 
not knowing that without these workers, nothing can be done at the state level. So when the governor tells you that, those are the governors that you go and check their wage bill, you will see millions and billions of naira being spent on consultancy, even when they have those workers to do the work. You, they spend money on what is not paying the state. So when we talk of worker salary, we are actually referring to, it's like somebody paying for the rent of his family. So when you say you cannot afford and you are still working, then uh, it calls for questioning. Because whether we like it or not, minimum wage is not saying maximum wage. Minimum wage is the least in which you can pay. Don't forget, Edo has kept that record under Oshomole. He was paying higher than minimum wage just to verify and to prove that very close. That is a minimum wage. It's not saying remain there. But this governor keep beating around the bush, working within the circle of minimum wage, complaining day and night, without doing anything possible to increase their internal revenue. Mm. Those who depend on oil money these are the consequences. Because when we don't know the essence of governance include to generate fund, then we wait to share money from Abuja at the end of the month. That is also on productive act. And uh, we cannot give room for those excuses anymore because they are actually disturbing the heart. I think uh, people who are still talking about the inability to pay 30,000, they don't have place. Uh, they, they don't, they, in fact, they don't have reason to remain in office. Mm. It's better to resign than to keep complaining of inability to govern when oh, the purpose yeah. for your election is to do so. N Nigerians don't resign. It's not in our DNA. We don't resign at all. No matter how bad it is, people can die under you. No problem. We just we'll find a way around it and still stay. We don't resign. So anyway, as we wrap up, I'd like you to to say something to your to your fellow uh, workers, to labor, to everybody celebrating Workers' Day today as a final word, please. Yes, today indeed is our Workers' Day. I would just uh, congratulate the Nigerian working class and uh, even the whole world. Because when we talk of Workers' Day, we are truly celebrating how it came to be. We are celebrating the Euro's past. People who paid price for freedom of workers to come alive today. People who ensure that workers don't work to die. Workers work to live. People who ensure that eight, working, eight hours working uh, daily was actually put in place as law. People that struggle for maternity leave. People that gave right to women gave right to men, ensured that injury to one is injury to all, not by speech, but by practice. It exists in sector. Today, you can see some sector te telling you zero tolerance to victimization because people stood their ground and fought for it. So when we say Workers' Day, we are celebrating achievement of workers, achievement of trade unions, achievement of our past heroes who actually did this as legacy that we may actually uh, end it or rather inherit it. So today we are encouraging the workers of today, representative of workforce all over Nigeria, to do everything possible. If you cannot improve where you are, maintain the standard that you met so that you have something to hand over to the next generation. So this celebration of Workers' Day will continue even if it will leave us and uh, continue to the, the last day. Because this is one thing that we use as measure, as yastic, to carry out appraisal on trade union activities all over the world. And it has been paying positively. Congratulations to Nigerians and my colleagues across the globe. Thank you so much, comrade. Uh, it's been wonderful having you on the program. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Okay, we've been talking to Comrade Amechi Asuguni, former Deputy President, NLC, and uh, Labor and Industrial Relations expert. We're talking, we're looking at the fact that one governor in uh, Nigeria, that is Godwin Obaseki of Edo State, has uh, raised the minimum wage to 70,000 uh, without any prompting. And um, we're hoping that uh, the federal government and other state governments, or, uh, yes, are going to do the uh, same and even exceed what the governor of Edo State has said. We're hoping the negotiation for minimum wage will reach a, a point where there will be no complaint from any quarters, be it government or the workers. Um, as we wrap up today, uh, I remember the, the proverb, a Russian proverb uh, that... Um, that I, I, I saw a, a few days ago, and it says, it says that the rich would have to eat money if the poor did not provide the food.
The rich would have to eat money if the poor did not provide the food. So you see, we've been saying it all the time that your workers are as important as you are. So don't treat them like slaves. And uh, you workers don't treat your masters as the people who are uh, causing your misfortune or, or that. It's nature. If the poor or the if the poor don't exist, we will not have the rich. If the rich do not exist, we will not have the poor. If you can wrap your head around that, so everybody compliments each other. So. The bosses respect your, your workers, the workers respect your bosses as well because one cannot survive without the other. And that is our message on Workers' Day. As we wish all workers all over the world, whether you're working for the government, you're working in a private uh, institution, or you're working for yourself, so long as you are doing something that is bringing food to the table of your family and the people around you, we congratulate you on this day. Uh, some churches also celebrate the uh, St. Joseph's Day today because he is one who they call the worker. He worked and raised the Son of God. Okay, so we'd like to wish you a wonderful day, a wonderful midweek, a wonderful Workers' Day, wonderful public holiday, and we're hoping that we're going to uh, reconnect tomorrow on the same program from 7 a.m. as we usually do on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. On behalf of the entire team of The Breakfast PLOS TV Africa, my name is Nyamgul Agaji, saying goodbye for now.